Hi, it's Sammy here. This is my first submission video for the Associate Trainees Programme for Art to Ride. And today I want to share with you um, a video that was taken on the first day of the clinic we've just had with Will in the UK. Um, this is Paddy. He's a 10-year-old Gypsy Cub gelding. And he's been training according to Art to Ride for 18 months now and today's session we started out with a little bit of work in hand we've just done the left rein and now we're heading on to the right rein so away we go and I'm just building up a little bit of activity here and as you can see he's heading straight into the stretch which is always nice to see um, so he's moving nice and actively here now and he's stretching all the way down to the ground and you can see here as well that he is consistent so he's stretching all the way down and he's staying stretching which is a very nice thing to see um, so here going down the long side of the arena we head into a shoulder four we keep the same amount of activity nothing changes and he also stays quite deep into the stretch the entire time. So that I can say is very, very good. And I'm quite happy with that. I couldn't ask for better from him. Um, so that's it for work in hand. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you our attempt at the PF. Now, we tend to practice this about once, maybe twice a week. I don't do it very often or for very long. Um, all I'm looking for here is, is for him to lift up a single diagonal pair at a time. So, for example, I want him to lift up, let's just say, the right front and the left hind together off the ground. And... That would be very nice. You see he gets a little bit strong there, so I'll just push him back a little bit. And then we carry on. And so we get a nice one there, but then he decides he feels a little bit uncomfortable and wants to run through the hand, so I have to keep going and look for another good diagonal. There we go. We've got a really nice one. So I lower my whip and I gave him a sugar cube is a nice reward for him so you'll see what I do here now is I go ahead and I walk him on in hand straight into the stretch and I usually do this um, to refresh his mind to give him a chance to relax because relaxing in his mind is in the stretch because it's a very easy thing to do and it's also refreshing his muscles as well because he's been stood up against the um, <clears throat> up against the wall um, with his head quite high. Um, so it's nice to allow him to stretch and sort of recuperate if you um, if you put it that way. So again, he's nice and active. He's stretching beautifully, and then we come back to the same spot on the long side, ready to try again. Now what I will say about this second attempt is it's not really as good as the first because he's a little more tense and he's wanting to run through my hands a little bit more. So you can see here um, we're a little, we're moving a little bit more forward than we were before and the diagonal pairs he lifts aren't quite as obvious as they were on the first bit so I'm just looking for a good sort of spot to um, end that on so you can see he gets a little bit strong here and then he lifts one there and another so then we just carry on walking and give him a chance to stretch out again um, a nice active stretch in the walk nice and consistent you can see as he walks his whole body moves which tells us that there isn't any tension in his body anywhere. 
if his whole body moves when he walks, he's sort of um, walking with a swagger. It means there's no tension. So I bring him down to the down the centre line, ready to get on him. And I give him a little pat and a cuddle because he just can't resist with that pony. He's just too adorable. Um, so I just get everything ready, just running my stirrups down, remembering to do up my girth. Because um, in a previous dressage test we did, I forgot to do up the girth and the saddle slipped halfway around. We did half the test with um, the saddle slipping, so that was quite um, entertaining. Um, so just getting ready to get on him now. And you'll see here that I get on him from the ground. Now, we only want to do this when we can mount them from the ground without pulling the saddle over. Because if we pull the saddle over, the more you do that, you're just going to make them sore in the back. And that's exactly what we don't want. So if you're strong enough and fit enough to bounce yourself up into the saddle and land softly on their backs then it's perfectly okay to get on from the ground. Now, I don't really tend to do this a lot at home. I tend to um, climb onto the fence of our arena and swing a leg over and away we go. So as we're walking here, um, he's a little bit up and down, um, but that's just because we're not quite, the pair of us are not quite concentrating yet. But when he does go into a stretch, it's nice, it's loose. And he stretches all the way down to the floor. You can see as he comes down here, how he's a little bit up and down. But that's not to worry because he gets better and better and more and more consistent as we go along in this session. You can see we're just building up a little bit of activity here. He's um, now starting to bring his nose right down. He's bringing his his whole length of his neck is right out in front of him, um, and he's also stepping under with his hind legs nicely. So now we're going to go ahead and turn by the centre line for a leg yield. Now, this first attempt at the leg yield we did in this session. Um, I wasn't clear enough with my aids. You can see um, my outside leg there wasn't as far back as it could be. So Paddy got a little bit confused whether he was supposed to be going in a straight line or whether he was supposed to be doing a leg yield. So that wasn't that great. So we're going to go back and try that again. And that's all we do when we make a little mistake when it's not... When something we do isn't quite that good, we just go back and try it again. We make no big deal of it. So I'm preparing my turn a little bit, um, a little bit further back. And there we go. And then I set myself up by looking at the marker, um, looking in the direction where I want to go. And then all I need to do is lift my outside hand up slightly and push him over using my inside leg. And he comes over and that was actually quite nice. He stayed in the stretch um, and he maintained the same activity as we had before. So that was really nice. So we don't need to try that again on that rein. So as you see, as we come across the diagonal, you'll see that when he really stretches down, like here, you can see his nose bobbing forward with every stride. And what's happening here is he has completely let go of any tension. You don't really tend to get that characteristic head bob when they're a little tense anywhere in their bodies, really. Because what's happening is the hind leg comes up underneath the horse's body. And it creates this channel of energy that travels up and along their top line all the way through their body. And it pushes 
the horse's nose out with every single stride. So that's what this um, head bob is. And that's usually only seen in the um, deepest of stretches that the horses can do in the walk. And you can see he's talking to me a little bit with his tail because I've just uh, asked him for a little more activity. Um, there's nothing to worry about there. So you see we come down um, by the centre line again to try our second leg heel to the left. Now you can see he speeds up a little bit there but he soon comes back and he's stepping over quite well. Yeah, he does lift his head a little bit, but towards the end of the leg yield, he lets the entire length of his neck back out again. So that's okay, I won't try that again. Um, and he's stretching nicely here. So we head on to a circle here. And I start to bring him up into a working walk. And as you can see here, there is nothing that changes in the walk from the stretch to the working walk. The only thing that changes is the height of his head and neck. And that tells me that he's ready to come up. He's ready to start coming up into a working gait. And you can see that sometimes um, during his working gait, he will come behind the vertical a little bit. And that's usually because of one of two things. It's usually either because I lower my hands too much or it's because we lo we lack in, we're lacking in activity. So that's one thing for me to bear in mind. And you can see as he comes past here that you see as I drop my inside hand, he comes behind the vertical right there. And then we lose activity. So when we ask our horses to come up from the stretch, all we do is we lift our hands up slightly and, and forwards um, over the withers and we just shorten our reins. And we want the walk to stay exactly the same. We want to keep the same rhythm, the same amount of activity. Um, and he does do this pretty well. Um, See, so coming down here, um, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing because I'm looking a little bit on the crooked side. I don't know whether I was asking him for a bit of a lateral movement, but either way, I've straightened myself back out again and we carry on going. And he's still in a working walk here. Moving quite nicely. He could be a little tiny bit more active there. Um, but not much. So we're going to try a little bit of a shoulder in here. And he does this quite well. He keeps the same amount of activity from the hind leg. Um, and he keeps, his, uh, keeps everything good there. I'm quite happy with that. And then we lose it slightly here. He tends to go into a little bit of a dolly daydream. And because he did a very nice um, shoulder in there, just let him stretch back down again. And then we go ahead and we change the direction. Now you can see here he is very, very straight. I just looked at the marker and he's headed straight for it. Now we don't practice any straightness training at all. Um, this is something that's improved on its own. See the way we get our horses to become straighter is by lifting their back. It's the same with many things. You can improve almost anything um, in their ridden work just by lifting their back. Um, so you see I'm circling up the top end in a nice working walk. You see we have a little too much neck bend there. But we soon straighten that out. Now all I have to do to straighten him is just touch the outside rein slightly. And it helps him to uh, balance a little bit. See so here we try and do a little bit of a shoulder in. Now this wasn't as great as the shoulder in we've just done. 
he's a little bit fussy with his head here. He's sort of wanting to go and stretch down, um, sort of fighting against me a little bit. So I let him out and, oh no I don't. So I just carry on for a little bit to a good spot so I can stretch him down. So he's stretching back down again now and again there was no change to his walk as he went from a working walk to a stretching walk. The only thing that changed was how high his head and neck is. Um, see I bring him back up again and he comes up easy. Um, there's no resistance when you bring him up from the stretch which is what we want. Um, because it's quite easy for him, so we head him into a trot, and it's a pretty decent transition there. He didn't throw his head or anything, he threw it then, because I asked him for a little bit more um, activity. Um, but that's nothing to worry about. So I'm just letting him back out and stretching him. And that he does very well. That's a nice stretch there. So as we come up along here, um, I'm trying to open his stride and he comes out of the stretch a little bit. Um, I think he got a little bit confused here whether he was supposed to be in a working frame or a stretch. But we get that stretch back and it comes quite nice. There we go. Now he's stretching quite nicely and then I start to bring him up again. And again, the same as before, um, the trot doesn't change at all. From the stretchy trot to the working trot. So we come down here and you can see he's not quite reaching into the contact. You see my outside rein was bouncing around a little bit and that's something you'll see quite a bit throughout this session is that sometimes he decides not to reach for the contact which is something we're working on um, you see there's a nice stretch there and that's nice right there and now we start doing a little bit of a sitting trot again there was no change to his trot um, which tells us he's ready to be sat on because he can keep, he can stay over his back and keep the amount of activity when I start to sit down. Now, occasionally, either I lose my balance and start to rise again, and a couple of times um, I tend to lose his back a little bit and then I start rising again. Um, so, this is our second lengthening of the trot. And all we want to do when we're lengthening our trot or the walk is exactly what it says on the tin. We just want to lengthen the stride without changing the rhythm. Um, so we don't want to quicken the pace, we just want to open the stride. So I'm sitting to the trot again. <coughs> And we've lost it there. I'm just trying to get it back, see if he will. Um, which this time, I don't think it was very su successful. So I just rose for a couple of strides to see if um, that time I lost it. I lost my balance. So I started rising again. And that's all we do when we lose our horses' backs. Um, when we're trying a little sitting trot, is we just rise again. See that was pretty decent. And then I go ahead and I open his stride up again. And that time it was better than the first two um, attempts in this session. Although we could only see his uh, bum and his bushy tail. Um, we could still see that that was pretty nice. So we're on a circle again at that end of the um, arena. In a working trot. 
just waiting to get into a nice little um, spot. He's um, not quite reaching for the contact there. So I'm just waiting for a nice spot, waiting for him to reach into it. So we're lacking a little bit of activity here. So I just need to push him on a little bit. And there we go, he comes quite nice there. <clears throat> and that's a nice working trot right there. I quite like that. See, as we come along this side of the circle, I start to do a bit of a sitting trot in a working frame. Now, because I had his pole a little bit too high, he couldn't manage it. So I've come back to the rising trot, I've dropped his pole a little bit, and then we try again. Which you can see this time, he's more able to sustain it. Um, there was no change this time in his pace, his back didn't drop. And that was overall pretty nice. Um, it's pretty good. So I open him out again, and again, that was a really nice lengthening of his stride. Um, you can see it was um, a little more obvious this time. Um, so the fact that that's improving is um, really nice. So we're doing a little bit of a shoulder in, in the working frame here, which is quite nice. He does that um, pretty well. And then I go ahead and stretch him out again. And then we change the rein. Oh no, we don't. We stay on the circle. <laughs> you see, when I ask him to stretch, he um, gives us a nice quality stretch. And one thing I've noticed since training um, with Art to Ride is his uh, paces have massively improved. You'll see um, there's quite a lot of thrust. That's a really nice lengthen in there. Um, he has quite a bit of thrust in his hind legs now. Whereas when we first started, he kind of looked like he was creeping across the floor. Like um, one of those Western pleasure horses. There was, there was no thrust at all. There was barely a moment of suspension in the trot. Um, but now, as you can see, there is a decent amount of thrush, uh, thrust. So I'm just circling him up at the top end. I'm looking for a nice spot where he's um, stretching nicely into the contact. And that's nice right there. I like that. And then the transition into canter, he did raise his um, head quite a lot, but that's nothing to worry about. He does come down and stretch. Um, and you can see his canter is still quite weak, but it's a lot better considering 18 months ago he couldn't canter at all. I literally could not get him into canter. And when I could, I couldn't keep him in canter. So... That's a massive improvement that's happened over time. Um, I haven't done a lot of canter work at home. Um, so the majority of his strength has been built up in walk and trot. And that's enabled him to actually be strong enough to get into canter. So that, And as soon as that started happening, he started to stretch. You see, as we change the rain, he's um, got a very nice stretch on him. So I bring him up into the working frame, and again, there was no change in his trot at all. Um, so he's more than capable of doing this. Um, so I head straight in a working trot trying to keep the uh, same amount of activity he's starting to feel a little bit on the tired side now um, 
but he's doing okay. He's um, working pretty nice. So I'm just looking for a nice spot here. And we head into Canter. Now on this rain, you can see he has a little bit of a tendency to fall in a little bit. And I don't think I help matters here. Um, simply because I struggle to balance on him in Canter on this rain anyway. But he does a pretty good job of it, regardless. Um, he's still stretching nicely. And we come down the long side and then we lose it <laughs> but he comes straight back down into a stretch which is always nice to see now if you were to um, draw an imaginary line from his withers to the tip of his tail you would see that it's almost pretty straight now um, yeah, there is still a little bit of a dip behind the saddle, um, but that has come up quite a lot. He was um, a little bit, well, quite sway-backed when we first started, um, when we first started training, according to Art to Ride. Um, so that's improved massively. Um, he's improved in a lot of ways. That's a really nice stretch there. Um, he's improved in a lot of ways since we've uh, started training together. And then that's a really nice working frame there. So as we're going large again. And then we do a little bit of a shoulder in in the working frame again he's not quite taking up the he's not quite reaching into the contact um but again we are working on that as um time goes on um so just change the rein i let him stretch out and open up his open up his trot lengthening his stride um and that's a really nice stretch there you see how far under his leg comes underneath him it almost comes under, his hoof is almost under my heel. And that's what really, really lifts them up behind the wither. And that's a really nice working trot there. And now he's starting to feel really tired underneath me because um, he's working quite hard here. And then we stretch him out again. And again, there was no change in his rhythm or in his trot at all. The only thing that changed was how high his head and neck was. And now we bring him back to walk. And we always like to end in the same way as we start a session so we always start a session in the stretch and the walk and that's exactly how we end our sessions in the stretch at the walk so just giving him room to to relax and you see how his whole body moves as he walks um that's pretty much all there is to it. So I think uh, that's the end now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped. And I will see you again next time. Bye.